Hello my soccer universe! In the 22nd and last round in the regular season, yes we have a regular season, weird league format, we've talked about it, uh, ad nauseum Lask is facing the big one, Red Bull Salzburg, the 10 time defending champions of Austria and yeah, this gives me a good opportunity to talk another time about uh, Red Bull Salzburg. I've already made a video on the rivalry between them and Austria Salzburg and there I talk also a little bit about the history before the club was called Red Bull Salzburg and I will focus in this video more on ever since the Red Bull takeover um, because I've already done the history kind of of Austria Salzburg a teeny bit. You can find the video linked up here and I think it makes for good watching because it all would explain the controversy surrounding this club in case you were interested or you don't know. Now as I already said uh, Red Bull Salzburg are the giants of the Bundesliga um, winning titles like crazy ever since Red Bull uh, took over they've never finished worse than in second place. And so um, many consider uh, Red, the Red Bull Salzburg because of that a curse and also because it's the company's money and modern football, blah, 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 blah. They're absolutely a curse. But I also want to point out that in a way for the Austrian game, Red Bull Salzburg have also been sort of a blessing. Due to the European record, they have lifted the Austrian Bundesliga for years almost by themselves. However, it also forced some Austrian clubs or many Austrian clubs to rethink their approach and try to mimic the Red Bull Salzburg uh, uh, approach which also raised the level of the league and as of late Austrian teams have actually been doing quite well in Europe however that does not apply to the two Vienna teams who are still very much bogged down by tradition although a change is afoot there but that's a completely different subject. So join me in this video for a deep dive on the evil genius, let's put it that way, that is Red Bull Salzburg. Okay, Red Bull Salzburg of course goes back to the old Austria Salzburg which was founded in 1933. The Red Bull takeover happened in April 2005 and the club itself would actually like to consider itself as a new club with no history. However, them taking over the license and, and so on the Bundesliga pulled it very, very quickly and said, no, nah, no, nah, you can't do it. Internally, the history of Austria Salzburg is not recognized, which also uh, is shown in the fact that the club itself has 17 championships. However, the club only recognizes 14 of those under the Red Bull era. Uh, the club has also won nine Austrian Cups all under the Red Bull era. Uh, before that uh, Austria Salzburg had lost four Cup Finals. Red Bull Salzburg has also lost one uh, uh, Cup Final um, and they are of course um, meanwhile Austrians European force having a semi-final appearance in the UEFA Cup being now all more or less regulars in the Champions League as well so the club has quite some clout already. The club uh, plays its game in the Red Bull Arena. This is a stadium that was built uh, on the outskirts of Salzburg very close to the German border uh, for Euro 2008. It had for longest of times it had ac actually was one of the two stadiums that had an artificial pitch that uh, has changed right now as well. The stadium is ac actually a nice venue. It did not originally was planned that the second tier will be removed and it will be a smaller stadium. However, when Red Bull take over, this quickly went out of the window. They had great ambitions. Uh, the stadium itself is rarely sold out in the Bundesliga. And if it's sold out, they only open the lower level. So it's always kind of a weird atmosphere, except for the away sex sector, which goes all the way up and down. Um, take it in walls, but walls, it has kind of an artificial flavor. The whole uh, arena, to be sure because they are not a company team. They're just kind of as a sponsored by a company. They are now known internationally only as FC Salzburg, which is a little bit weird. Uh, the club has been restructured in such a way that Red Bull is not, um, is not the de facto owner anymore. They're now only sponsor and Red Bull is owning fully Red uh, RB Leipzig. 
kind of weird stuff but in order to allow both teams to play in europe that's why they had to make this arrangement everyone knows it's a fully red bull owned club um it's just technicalities that was of course and part of the bigger red bull group network and meaning i uh, they are getting a lot of international talent that they're scouted like from africa brazil and and so on that is then funneled through salzburg and into leipzig at the end um more or less inofficially official uh, this way. I would say Red Bull Salzburg at, at, at the moment are the number two team in the entire Red Bull group with Leipzig taking the top spot and Salsa Salzburg and so on. Uh, you know, they all play kind of the same uh, brand of high energy football. More on that also a little bit later in the history section. And a lot of talents have gone through Salzburg. I mean, the most notable ones, definitely uh, Sadio Mane and of course... Um, Erling Holland. So you saw world class strikers already in the Bundesliga. Uh, it's the latest one, I think, is Dominic Soboschleid, who made it through Salz. So Salzburg is now at Liverpool. So, really, big talents usually make their way through Salzburg at this moment. Okay, when it comes to the fan base, this is a very, very weird subject because it was initially a very split fan base with, you know, mostly Austria Salzburg fans and they were split down the middle. Do we stay with the purple? Do we go with the new red and white? And support was relatively uh, meager at the beginning and the people that stayed with red and white were kind of looked down upon still are looked down upon yes there are some organized fan groups however they are not as fervent i mean yes they do travel to linz but linz is close by also more on that a little bit later uh and you and they get some support and of course their european success breeds support but they have never been the club of the heart like the old Oscar Salzburg were when they actually made it all the way to the UEFA Cup final in 94 and almost everyone in Austria were Austria Salzburg fans. At least. Red Bull Salzburg has a lot of respect for reaching European success and you see it already, yes, smaller kids, they see that and maybe this is the fan base they are growing. But uh, the club actually wants to kind of make this modern, more family feel of, of a club, which on one side is good, but it also, uh, as I said, creates kind of a artificial atmosphere. It is not as rowdy as in more established fan bases overall. Personally, when we play Red Bull Salzburg uh, here in Linz, uh, you see a lot of uh, banners that are usually directed directly at the comp company, the club is internally always called their concern, so the conglomerate, if you would like, um, but and is not seen as real. It's also the fan bases are not seen as real fans. They're more seen like as glory hunters. On the other side, you know, you see the tifos, you see the flags waved around. So uh, with time, something has been built. They are the one fan base in all of Austria that unanimously is disliked because of the club, not necessarily because of what they are doing. And not doing. Now let's talk a little bit about the history of the club and this is again only Red Bull era. I said it already, ever since Red Bull took over, the club has never finished below second place. Yes. Uh, however, in, up until 2012, I would say, it was still thought of that while they have the best players and the best uh, coaching staff, best environment, everything, they could be gotten it because their strategy at that time was to get old names. Players that have that are big names but are well past their prime. And yes, uh, Matte Schitz had a friendship with Franz Beckenbauer. I guess they were golfing buddies in Kitzbühel or something like that. And one of the first ones that came in was, of course, uh, Alexander Zickler and Thomas Linke uh, coming directly from Bayern to South Salzburg. It's also not too far away. And this was then kind of the idea. Yes, you try to get the best Austrian players in there as well. So if, um, I'm thinking, for instance, uh, I'm Mark Janko. I'm thinking... Um, and even sheets and so on, which was a highly controversial move, but it was always kind of a little bit haphazard, the whole thing. Um, 
you also got big name coaches. I mean, you started out with Kudyara, uh, who did not uh, win the title in the first uh, time to time around. And then you went for the big star with uh, Giovanni Tarapatoni and Lothar Mateus. Yes, they won the title. However, in their second season, Lothar Mateus was then already gone. Uh, Tarapatoni did not win the title. He went to Ireland. And in, in, in addition, uh, they lost the title to Rapid Vienna by losing on Easter Sunday 07 at home. Ouch. That was... Trapatoni's heaviest defeat in his career. And I think Rapid Vienna fans still think of this uh, game like it was yesterday. It's one of those monumental games in Austrian history where, yeah, in the third season of Red Bull, Red Bull had only won one title. However, things then quickly changed. After the Trapatoni era was over, they went on kind of this whole Dutch move. We had Co Adrianze, won the title, moved on. Then you got Hüb Stevens for two seasons. Hüb Stevens also another relatively big name, mainly because of his triumph with Schalke and almost leading Schalke to a title, uh, I think in 2000. Um, he also won a title with Red Bull Salzburg. Uh, however, then he, it was a very, very rough season where actually they were not good. It was actually lucky to finish in second behind Sturm Graz. Another sensational uh, title win there. Then Ricardo Moniz took over. He actually won the title. It actually seems like it was something uh, brewing. But then 2012 happened. And what happened in 2012 is that Dietrich Mateschitz actually met with Ralf Rangnick and wanted to get some pointers. And Rangnick says, uh, you're doing everything wrong. You're only getting all stars. You don't have a clear strategy. You, with every coach, uh, everything changes. You need to have it all thought through and rely on young talent and really uh, use the youth power because this is the position that Austria is in. Yes. Matos is of course hired Rangnick immediately to oversee not only uh, as a sports director to oversee the entire company in in in, in a way of how to uh, go from Salzburg. To, uh, to Leipzig and coordinate it all, all and have a, uh, em employ his style of play. And the first coach hired under this was Roger Schmidt. Did not work out immediately. Uh, there was a big finding phase there uh, and it allowed actually Austria's uh, Vienna to win the title. Although Salzburg played a pretty good season overall. I mean, a 77 points total at that time was the highest that the club had achieved. However, Austria Vienna played an even better season. So uh, this is one of the most underappreciated championships. Meanwhile, although everyone says this is the last one that was there. It was, of course, overshadowed by the big failure, talking about that in a second, in the Champions League qualification. However, then, and there are the big names. You had, you had a Sadio Mane in there. You were building uh, a Kevin Campbell. And so you were building a really high energy team. And in the following season, Red Bull Salzburg were absolutely unstoppable, winning the league in 80 points, 110 goals scored. Also winning uh, the cup. They already won the cup under Ricardo Moniz, so this was twice the double for Red Bull Salz Salzburg, which has not happened under the old Austria period. And from there on, it was only one way. Salzburg have never not finished first ever since this first title under Roger Schmidt. And it has been more or less who are the coaches that can come and go. So Roger Schmidt uh, stayed for two seasons. Then came Adi, Adi Hütter also winning the title and actually um, really liking and uh, building on what Roger Schmidt has, has, has built. Although in Europe it was maybe not as successful as one would have liked. But then came the cut that suddenly Leipzig became the truly preferred club Adi Hütter did not like that. And then there was a, a, a season, the 15, 16 one, there was a little bit um, a transition period where uh, you had three coaches in the end. Oscar Garcia takes over for, for, for a season and again leads the club into steady waters and to a title. However, they really hit in that same season, 16, 17, they win the UEFA Youth League under coach Marco Rose. And when Oscar Garcia is uh, dismissed, Marco Rose takes over and I want to say almost lead Salzburg to the most successful phase up until that uh, um, up until that point, uh, winning two titles with a uh, with eighty three points. Then very very convincing, playing a great style, a great attacking style. That uh, in the end, then 
got him the job at Gladbach. Jesse Mark took over then from uh, Marco Rose, okay. but it was not the revolution, the Marco Rose uh, evolution any, anymore. Uh, it was also not con con convincing. Uh, that changed under and, and Matthias Jaisle, where it was also really uh, convincing and almost Salzburg could barely got it, although I think the last season with him you could already see the house was a little bit crumbling. Because Now, Salzburg should also be recognized for their big European record and a European record that first includes a lot of failure and qualify for the Champions League, which was always the goal. And it was a goal that almost destroyed Salzburg at many occasions. Uh, and I can rattle it through in 06. You lose to Valencia. Yes, you can lose to Valencia 1-0 in 0-3. In, uh, in, in, in 07, you lose to Schachter Donetsk. Yes, you, you, you can do it. It was 1-0 one and 1-2 one, and then in the last minute you concede a goal. You would have uh, otherwise um, advanced on uh, away goals rule. This was the closest one because then in 09, Maccabi Haifa completely outclassed 1-2 uh, and 0-3. However, you go into the Europa League and this is the other one in the Europa League. This was their competition for most of the time where they actually made up for all the failures and actually accrued a lot of points for themselves and also for the Austrian League. They go to the round of thir uh, 32 where they are dis um, then disposed by um, Standard Liege. Mac uh, in 10, Maccabi, uh, no, Hapoel Tel Aviv, 2-3 two, two, and 1-1. One, one. So it's the Israelis. You also um, only make it to the group stage where you have a group with City and Juve, but you got two draws against Juve, so at least that. Uh, in 11-12, um, they were not qualified for the Champions League. However, in the Europa League, they made it through the group stage, eliminating um, PSG, finishing second behind Athletic Club, uh, and then being ousted by Met Metalist Kharkiv. Uh, we have then the big one in 2012. One of the first games on a new coach, Roger Schmidt. They lose to lowly Düdelange from Luxembourg. Losing uh, away from 1-0 and then 4-3 on the away goals. They were 3-2 down and late couldn't find the turn around. This is a result that completely eliminated them for Europe and they were actually the butt of all jokes in Austria at that time. However, the next yeah, they made good, good, good. Yes, you lose to Fenerbahce. Okay, you can lose to Fenerbahce. Do the launch, you cannot lose. You can lose to, Fen to, 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 to Fenerbahce, 4 to an aggregate, but then you go on this great run in, in, in the Europa League where you, in the round of 32, you eliminate Ajax with 6 1 aggregate and then are only eliminated by a Basel side that he completely dominated, but Basel were a wily team that held it tight and in, 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 in the end were very, very efficient. But this was the first sign that something really is, is, is growing. This was the first time that I also said, hmm, they are really up to something here. However, the next two years are then the ones where they lose to Malmö and both times, first one you win 2-1 at home, then you win 2-0 at home, both times you lose 3-0 away from home. Uh, especially the second one, then it really uh, hurt badly that you were so outclassed, they didn't even make, 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 make it to the Europa League group stage. Uh, in the 2004-2015, they actually make it to the uh, round of 32, where they actually romped the, gru the group stage there and were eliminated by Via Real. And then come the Balkan teams that eliminate them bit after bit after bit after bit. We have Dinamo Zagreb. They're losing 2-1 at home in overtime. Yes, if you get an overtime goal, a goal at home, you're most likely not advancing. Uh, and then also in the group stage, it was not so good. This was the Oscar Garcia years. Against the Rijeka, I think this is probably the one that must hurt after do to launch the most because you lose 1-1 one, one on aggregate on the away goals rule against the Rijeka team that frankly is a team that Salzburg should beat any time. However, they make up for it in the Europa League. They uh, romp through the group stage uh, where they had uh, also Olympic Marseille in, in there. More on them in just a second. Then they beat uh, Real Sociedad. Then they go to Dort Dortmund. Yes, this was the Dortmund team right after Klopp left. Peter Stöger is there. They beat them 2-1 on Agri. That is the second time that everyone also says, ah, this might be something. Should have been eliminated by Lazio, losing 4-2 away from home, which kind of uh, where they were outclassed. However, they made their two goals. Lazio scored early, but then it was a quick equalizer. And then I think within five minutes, they scored three goals in the second half to advance. 
on to the semifinals where they be, uh, uh, meet Marseille again. That they beat in the group stage one nil on Eric Egger, a Marseille team that just had eliminated Leipzig. They lose 2 nil away from home. However, they win 2 nil and then it goes to overtime where a corner is given that was never in the world a corner and Rolando scores very, very late uh, the winning goal for OM who then move on to the final, losing to Atletico Madrid. We're not done yet with champ with champ 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 champ, champ, champ league, league, league favor, uh, failure because the last one so we had Dynamo we had Rijeka now we had Red Star Belgrade and this one was also one that was almost ridiculous how they managed to not win this one two two eliminated on at home eliminated on away goals again they go in the group stage where they play against Leipzig and there this was actually a heated duel because the fan base were gunning for them. They beat them twice. They also then uh, move on into the round of 16, where then eliminated by Napoli in a score that was much closer than the game actually was. And then in 1920, having all this great Europa League success, the Austrian coefficient was good enough that Salzburg did not have to play in the playoffs anymore. They go in the group stage and they do well against Liverpool, against Nap Napoli, you know, being 3 0 down at the halftime. Then Chloe back to 3 3 before losing 4 3. They also uh, beat uh, Gent, uh, no, Genk very uh, convincingly. Erling Holland uh, makes his name in this uh, phase and uh, finish third in the group stage where they then eliminated in the Europa League by Frankfurt. That is now the new phase. You qualify relatively easy for the Champions League. However, however, in the Europa League, you almost immediately eliminated as as well. Um, what also was new is that so suddenly you have to go in the playoffs for the next two two seasons, but you manage. You get over uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv. You get over Brøndby. In the second time, 21-22 under Matthias Jaisler, you actually uh, it, you survived the group stage in the Champions League. Yes, it was not the toughest of groups, but you survived that one. You eliminated by a Bayern Munich side afterwards. 22-23, uh, you also third in the group stage, eliminated by Roma. But now 23-24, eliminated as fourth place team. Yes, it was a tough group, but a little bit of a downer right there. Currently, the club is coached by Gerhard Struber, who took over at the beginning of the season, and he is a Red Bull product, but this is the first time that he worked at Red Bull. He actually was also a player for the old, old Austria Salzburg. Um, I gotta say, Gerhard Struber is probably uh, the right appointment, but at the moment, I think he still has to find his way there. This Salzburg team looks a little bit vulnerable, and we saw already the European record is also going down a teeny bit. Uh, but... They are still the best team in, in the league and on their day they can beat any, anyone but they have shown some uncharacteristic frailties. For instance, uh, not winning in two games against newly promoted blau weiss Linz, also losing to Lusk at home at the same, at the same time. So they feel they can be gotten at. However, whenever uh, you think that an, one of the opponents could get them, the opponents also fail. So they are just staying above the water line but it seems like uh, they're a little bit on a downturn at the moment and i think it needs uh, i think Gerhard Struber he's a peculiar coach if you're an MLS fan you probably know a little bit of him um he's a peculiar coach i think he has the right ideas he also has the right surroundings i just think that he needs to implement his style of play to get everything and i always am afraid that he is one that would actually jump away uh, at a bigger opportunity at any time so for me well salzburg are still the kings of the league and are also in favor to win another title uh at this moment in time maybe maybe after 10 in in, in a row this could be broken, uh, but it also feels kind of a last chance because I think next season Salzburg will could get it right again. Now on to the rivalry with Lusk. I mean, Linz and Salzburg are the third and the fourth largest cities respectively within Austria, with Linz 
almost double the size but you know they're also so they're relatively big and they are very close together i mean it takes an hour an hour 50 minutes uh to travel by car between these two cities so austria salzburg against lask was always a natural rivalry right there because you know uh salzburg is a very posh town linz is very much a working class town uh upper austria is always overlooked because Salzburg is so glamorous and has all, 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 all the mountains where Upper Austria was always uh, a, first a little bit more rural, but also um, now they have a lot of um, economic power, way more than Salzburg does. So there was always a field of tension there. Since the Red Bull take takeover, I mean, nobody likes Red Bull. So there is also this rivalry you like to beat them and the first time they played red bull salzburg, salzburg at home they actually beat them the reigning champions 4-1 at home it's a rare piece of glory it's a rare piece of ppp piece of glory um i would say winning against salzburg feels good how it doesn't feel as good as if you beat like a big t a big fan base like rapid Austria, Sturm Graz, or something like, like like that. I think this rivalry with Salzburg is totally gone at this moment. Uh, the record also l reads relatively ugly, although I I find it a little bit better than uh, one, one would have expected. You have in the Bundesliga five wins, 12 draws and 22 losses. You can add five more in the cup. Four of them came away from one uh, at home, which we just had recently. So that's 27 losses. Uh, I think it's a total of 39 games in the Bundesliga. We made 27 points. So it's very, very one-sided. But that being said, Lusk, ever since they got back up, were one of the few teams that actually were holding their own with Salzburg. You just, Salzburg was always a teeny bit better. You first hit the Marco Rosa era, and then you kind of shot yourself in the foot in 1920, where you really had a big, big, big chance. Also has, has represented the rivalry. Uh, Lusk has been slightly more successful away from home, getting three wins there and five draws, whereas at home you only have two wins. And as you saw the one in 2007, um, yeah, that's a long time ago. The other one was in 2017. I hope it's not another 10 years before you beat Salzburg again. So two draws and seven, uh, two wins and seven draws at home, uh, whereas three wins and five draws away from home. <music> Now, ahead of this match, this is the only match of this last round of the re re regular season that is not played in con uh, concurrently with all the other ones because it has no impact on that. Uh, so the Bundesliga said, yeah, let's have a top game just by itself. Everyone can watch this one. The problem is that Lask are in a really rough shape. Uh, have not won in 24 so far. Um, and while the first three games, I think they overall played relatively well. And there were good signs and you were just unlucky not to win. Ever since you lose against Wolfsburg and now against Alta, you showed really, really, really bad form. And it's a self perpetuating negative cycle and the players already said it. Now you play against Salzburg and nobody expects anything against Salzburg. That being said, just a month ago you played them in the, in, in the cup and you were arg 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 the better team. You just didn't defend the dead ball situations very well. So there you go. But at the moment, I think the mood is really, really bad. You need that win in a way. On the other side, the game on the larger scale of things, after this game, the points will be halved. Does not matter all that much to, uh, you know, it doesn't have much impact. Of course, if Salzburg win, they will win uh, that uh, the group. They will also, only if they lose and Sturm Graz win at the same time, they can lose for first place but they will very much stay in contention for the title uh and it will get tighter for lusk it might be yeah you could actually get a little bit of a teeny cushion on the three below so that's the cac situation but i think avoiding defeat in that one would be the first priority for lusk although i know they never will play so defensively um in any case I really hope you enjoyed this long foray into Red Bull Sal Salzburg. Uh, it is a very contentious club, but meanwhile, it is a very rich club. Uh, a club whose playing style has now also been transferred onto the Nash national team, and the Austrian national team is also doing well. Mostly because of Red Bull Salzburg and Ralf Rangnick masterminding it all. So, 
They have a hold on, 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 on the leak. The whole structure is very, very questionable. That's the bad. However, and that's the curse on the leak. However, the good side is that they raised the level of the league. Other teams are catching up now that even the Vienna teams are kind of trying to copy what's happening there. And also the Austrian national team is profiting from Red Bull Salzburg being so successful. And I guess that's a good thing. So give or take. In any case, let me know what you think about uh, Red Bull Salzburg, the history and so on. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon about more for sure. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!